I think that whilst we're waiting for everyone, it would be quite nice to do a little selfie. So I hope you're all ready to smile, okay? Everyone smiling? Okay. Cheese. I think you can do a little bit better than that. Are we ready? Just one more. Whilst we're waiting, everyone say cheese. You ready? Cheese. Lovely. Good stuff. Can we close the doors then? No. <laughs> if you ever go to a conference in the UK, never expect food that good. Just so you know. So you're all probably half asleep now after all that awesome food. No, they're squeezing more people in. The doors are shutting. Wonderful. Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the, the hard slog, the afternoon period. The doors have opened again, but I'm going to carry on. Um, so here we are. So um, probably one of the biggest obstacles to maximizing business agility is poor communication, right? Everyone's been talking about it today. Visualization is a key enabler for business alignment and for um, simplifying information. Um, and when you think that 90% of the information that's transmitted to the brain is visual, it's about time you guys started to unlock that superpower. So this talk's really, really about that. And this is wonderful because you may have seen me on my hands and knees doing the drawing. I may challenge you to do some drawing. So this is the easy bit for me. Okay. So. Um, I would like to do a little exercise uh, to get you warmed up. Now, you're at an Agile conference, so I assume you know what a post-it is, right? You're familiar? Could somebody hold a post-it up just in case? There we are. Thank you. This is a post-it. This is a post-it. So this talk is all around how you can unlock that superpower of visualization. Um, and it's not an exclusive art. It's not just for myself. There is some awesome work being done. You might have seen Barry's talk, some fantastic drawings being done, and someone in the audience who's created them, and, uh, and, and uh, Henrik Nyberg as well, awesome drawings going on there. But it's not just us, you two can draw. So here we go. So has everyone, what you need is to have access to a post-it and a pen. Has everyone got a pen? Okay. I'm gonna throw you right into the deep end, okay? Please make sure you have a post-it and a pen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one signal to get some level of um, control. When I put my arm up like this, what I'd like you to do is to copy me. And when you see uh, everyone else with their arm up, you stop talking, OK? And then, and then we'll actually get some, you know, we'll get back together. Um, the problem is if you do this and you carry on talking, it won't work. So if we practice, put my hand up. Okay, some people are still a little bit sleepy after lunch. It's okay. Right, I'm going to throw you right in. I would like you to draw the person sitting next to you. Away you go. Draw the person sitting next to you. No post-its. There are some post-its scattered around, so. I'm going to give you 10 seconds remaining for this. Very small time box. Five seconds remaining. And stop. Now please present your picture to the person sitting next to you. <laughs> Lots of laughter. Okay. One hand, <laughs> two. You got, you're, you're picking up. 
can I ask a question? What was the first word that came to your mind when you presented the picture? Good? What did you want to say when you showed the picture? Maybe sorry. Maybe sorry. Why is that? Why did you feel sorry, right? Um, first thing about drawing, it's, it, it provides a level of vulnerability. And we think about all the things that people have been talking today about cross-functional teams and trust. It, it really helps to kind of create that level of um, vulnerability and safety and, and trust so that they, you're kind of creating that level. So you're in an environment that is trusted. Um, and please remove any inhibition that you can't draw, OK? Um, so that's the first little bit of learning there. Oh, I'm going to bounce back. So when we talk about visual thinking, what we're really talking about is whole brain thinking. So whether you believe in this, uh, that the, the theory of right or left side brain dominant, it's quite good to conceptually think in this way because it helps you to articulate different ways in which people think. And again, looking at cross-functional teams, it's great to have both sides. So um, this idea of... Um, uh, the hem of having a, a right or left side dominant uh, brain um, kind of goes back to the 1960s. The idea is if you're left side of the brain uh, as a thinker, you see the detail. Uh, you see the detail first. You're very analytical, sequential driven, much, much more about that sort of uh, approach, analytically uh, driven. Um, and the right side of the brain is much more of the big picture thinker, the empathetic side. So, a sh a show of hands, who sees themselves in the left side? Okay, well, they're all the things that you can automate, so maybe you should start thinking about the right side. Anyway, so that's the idea. So we're unlocking this idea of, of working to two sides. Um, but when we talk about, uh, again, visual thinking and this, this idea of visual thinking, this idea kind of stems back to the 60s, so you'd think it'd kind of be uh, relatively new, but in fact, um, Anthropologists have proven that the paintings on caves uh, that stem back 40,000 years were actually used to transmit information, okay? So that's really key here. It wasn't just fancy drawing, it's to do with transmitting information. Okay, so I'd like to do one more exercise, okay? And there'll be even more chaos. I would like you, if you can, and I'll time box this to two minutes. And um, for those of you that do have a, a post-it, apologies for those of you that haven't, uh, all I would like you to do is to draw each of these things on a post-it, one per post-it. I would like you to draw a house on one post-it. I would like you to draw a something that resembles a phone, something that resembles Istanbul, and something that resembles Agile. And I'll give you, and try not to write the word on there. Um, if you can do that, I'll give you two minutes, starting now. It's not as much fun, this exercise, if you haven't got a pen or paper, but you can imagine. A house, a phone, Istanbul, and Agile. If I close my eyes, all I can picture is nice food. That was a very generous minute. I'll give you one more minute. Perhaps those of you that, that uh, haven't got the paper, close your eyes and imagine what you might draw and what you may struggle with. Oh, interesting. Music and lights at the same time. That was the power of you all closing your eyes. It's impressive. OK, pain, pain over. What I would like you to do now, if you could stop now that, um, I would like you to grab your post-its and I would like you, just in case the, the person next to you was cheating, I would like you to grab your post-its, and I would like you to exchange your post-its with someone on a different row. Please exchange your post-its now. And say, well done, these are lovely. Exchange your post-its. 
There's very little exchanging going on. I feel that some of you may not have drawn. <laughs> okay. Post-its should be exchanged. Okay. Shouldn't take too long. Have you all exchanged post-its? Yes? Do we remember the arm signal? Hand signal? Okay, good, good, good. I'm going to come and pick on you now. Okay. Um, could you all please hold up the picture that resembles a house? Could you just hold it up, the pictures that resemble a house? Wonderful. They're all on one. I like that. That's good. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Would you, would you mind if I hold... Oh, this one is even better. Can I hold this? Okay. Who on earth drew this picture here? Who drew this? You just... All you have to say is no, it works better if you say no. Do you actually have a house with two windows? You do not, sir. I'm not a magician, by the way. That's the last keynote. Um, so that's it. We, do, do you recognize this as a house? Awesome. First bit of learning. You sounded like, yeah, that sounded really deflated there. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is that we, we're all conditioned to draw using a universal language, which we've always used since we were children. Now, I'm not saying that you draw like a child. I'm saying that we're all conditioned to draw. So the most important thing to say is that it is, it is a universal language, okay, that we can all uh, communicate using. And if you think, or having a conversation just, just before the talk about, the, you know, just within Istanbul itself, how many different spoken languages there are. If you think about the, in the context of Agile and the business, how, how much of a lack of alignment there is between tech and business sometimes, you know, a universal language is really powerful. So a round of applause. You can all draw using a universal language. <laughs> Wonderful. Please hold up the phone picture, please. Good, good, good. Oh, fantastic. That's the one I wanted. Oh, even better, that's bigger. Does anyone, I mean, it, yours was really good as well, but I just, um, who, does anyone recognize this picture? What's this? It's a phone. So it's a very old fashioned phone, right? Very straight. Is anyone else drawn or anyone's drawn this old fashioned phone? Yeah? Awesome. It was a trick. I'm hoping you did. So, we actually use symbols and pictures to communicate. So, again, icons and symbols. Um, those of you in the room that are facilitators or coaches or trainers, a show of hands, do you ever use road signs or anything when you're communicating visually? Excellent, thanks. I've got at least one person with the hand up. So again, back in the day, I used to work uh, with adults with learning disabilities, and you would assume that people with reading and writing difficulties that you were with at the time could actually read all the things that they could see, but it was like Tesco's, Coca-Cola, they were icons, so they're very powerful things. What was the hardest thing to draw? Agile or Istanbul, agile. Why was agile difficult to draw? Abstract? Abstract, absolutely. So the, the things, uh, the, the phone, I could have asked you to draw a house, a boot, I could have asked you to draw a shoe. These are what you'd call pictographs. So they're actually quite easy. We can pluck them from our mind. But I'm, uh, agile is an, is an idea graph, is an abstract term. And agile and the world of agile uh, is riddled in idea graphs if you think of retrospectives and things like that. So a little bit of learning, a little bit of... Um, a takeaway for you. If you want to visualize quickly, think of something that you need to draw. If you draw that 50 times, it becomes part of your muscle memory, and it's easier to, to, to unleash that. So well done. Awesome stuff. OK. Um, so again, um, there, there is a kind of a symbol hierarchy for how clear information can be. And this actually, I now have worked in the Agile space for 10 years, but um, when I left uni back in 2000, my first job, my first vocation was in social care. And there was something called the symbol hierarchy. And there's a level of abstraction of how we communicate a message. So if I was explaining that an elephant was coming into the room, bringing an elephant in is the best way to describe an elephant. And then we look as we go up, if I brought a miniature or a little drawing, uh, sorry, a little, uh, uh, a little sort of toy that would, that is an object, that works quite well. Then we have photographs and black and white photographs, then we have drawings and then the uh, and symbols, and the, the written word is the most abstract form. So bear that in mind uh, in, in the context of product management and product delivery. 
Okay, and let's take it into that space now. I'm sure uh, many of you here that are agile trainers have uh, probably at some stage in your, in your life had the uh, IT project uh, picture in your, in your slide deck. Um, but it's a great example of exactly this problem, right? A lack of alignment. Is anyone familiar with this? Yeah, seen it before, right? It's very old, right? But it's, it's so true. You know, has anyone, uh, we've all uh, we've created something and assumed that we understood it. You know, in that waterfall approach, we understood, uh, we thought we, we knew what the requirements were, we were clear we knew what we were doing, but actually we weren't on the same page. So a picture really does speak a thousand words. Um, so everyone can draw. Um, they, I will be doing a visual thinking skills workshop uh, on Saturday, but my quest is to actually go out there and support other people to use visualization as an enabler to communicate effectively. And a few ground rules. The first thing is don't be precious. Um, you, it's not about uh, everything being wonderful. You're not trying to create a work of art. You're trying to express something. There's no time to be precious, especially when you're at that flip chart, you're working with your teams. Keep calm and carry on. Don't panic when you're at the flip chart and start thinking I've spelt something wrong, that's fine. Again, it's around communication. Communication over decoration. Everyone likes their flip charts to dazzle and ping, but really it's around how can we communicate something. Many people say to me, well, I don't really draw, but sometimes I just draw a few arrows to explain something. I'm sorry, that's drawing, right? Communicating visually. Um, it's okay to be messy. Uh, when I was a business analyst, I was asked to create an as-is process using that lovely thing called Visio, nice bit of Visio. Um, and, and it was a complete mess. It was overly populated with information and it was unclear. And I said to the program manager, is this okay? He said, it's perfect. I said, how is this perfect? It's unclear. He said, that's exactly the message we want. So if your drawings are complex, sometimes that's exactly the message we need to present to stakeholders. So again, if you think about systems thinking, complexity thinking, wicked problems, actually being messy is not such a bad idea. It's a process over art. Um, I can sometimes forget about being precious uh, and, and the need to be all, and I get a little bit tight. Um, I worked with an organization only a month ago where I went in there and, uh, and it was one of those moments where I was kind of looking at this big large business transformation and they wanted me to visualize their story. And I sort of looked at them and said, what now? And they looked at me and said, I don't know. And it was kind of a, a fight off to see what happens. Um, and I found myself going through 500 slides and having 30 different people telling me all of this stuff. And I created the messiest drawing you have ever seen. And I felt like saying, you know, I'm, I've, I've failed. And they said, that's great. You know, that's the structure. That's what we needed. And then the next day, I drew it up and created a wonderful storyboard. And once again, they riddled it in post-its and said, these are all the problems. And I said, again, have I, have I failed? Not at all. It's exactly what we needed. So, Visuals actually allow you to find the problems, unearth the problems, so you need that as a, as a space. Practice makes perfect and simplicity is key. It's all around being simple. So those of you that are joining me, the biggest takeaway you'll find is that it's around simplicity. So I just wanted to talk about it in the business context. Um, and for me, there's sort of three categories that I wanted to, four categories that I wanted to look at. Um, for me, actually, there's, there's three key areas of where you can predominantly focus on the power of visualization. One is participation and engagement, me drawing uh, visuals and doing live illustration to help with that engagement. And the other two is problem solving and idea mapping. And if you think about the space that you're in, whether you're doing a pair, pair working, you're doing a daily stand-up, you're working at a review, you've got a requirements gathering workshop, regardless of the meeting, you're always trying to generate ideas or solve problems. But these are the four areas that I wanted to focus on. Um, so starting with um, visualizing ideas, um, it's really good to have a graphic metaphor ready. For those of you that do uh, retrospectives, sometimes it's really good to blur a visual metaphor that you will understand with something that you're trying to uh, work through. So visuals are really powerful and a great way to generate ideas and get a level of alignment. 
You can also create templates to make things easier for yourself. So again, idea mapping, really powerful. And again, something you can do effectively together. Um, visual, visual, visualizing the problems. Um, I think when you're generating ideas and solving problems, the two become blurred. Um, you may be familiar with some, such things as the sailboat, which is in the game storming book. Um, some great ways in which we can do this. And again, uh, this is with a, a large, um, a large-scale planning event, um, and it was. It wasn't until we visualised things that we saw those levels of dependencies between things. So it's really powerful to again visualise the problems and find out what's going on. But really, you know, doing that effectively together and making sure you have a level of alignment and cohesion. And again, storytelling. So this is the. This is the. the uh, example that I had. So I was working with the organization, the top left-hand corner, it's not very pretty, but it's part of that process, process over art. And working with the, with the colleagues and working with the clients to actually identify what their story was. And a very kind of iterative, incremental approach to that. Once we're clear about what the message is, we can then think about such things as digital, digitized illustrations and sharing that across the business. But the most important thing is that face-to-face -face interaction and then we can work along from there to the visuals there. The key thing really is around collaboration. Um, and again, moving away from the agile space, but thinking around design thinking. I've worked with, um, with, with teams where we've gone from ethnographic research, we've built personas, we've created customer-centric products, we've looked at empathy mapping, we've done all this wonderful stuff, we've look, thought of elevator pitches, we've, we've created some very um, thought-provoking visions, and it's not until maybe lunchtime that I say to these teams, here you go, here's a pen, draw what this product looks like, and everyone's completely on a different page. So we all make these assumptions, but collaboration is key. It's the quickest way to ensure that we can get to where we need to get faster. So that's the key thing. The other key thing that I wanted to really take out from this is that really, as facilitators and coaches, the key to visual thinking is actually to actively listen and to synthesize those ideas. The drawing itself is a very simple thing. It's the synthesizing that's key. So make sure that you focus, make sure you listen with both ears. And what I would propose to you as a challenge is that for the rest of the day, you go forth with your notebooks and your pens and try to visualize some of the insights that come from the talks. Um, I don't know whether we do questions now. Have we time for questions? We do. If any questions at all, then... You are free to go, thank you very much.